Hi everyone, it's Miss Mary Ellen at the Randolph Township Library. Welcome back to STEAM Explorers. You know, when I was coming to work today, I realized that I was going over a few bridges. And when you come to our library, you probably go over bridges too. And you may not even realize it. Because when we think of bridges, we think of big things like the Golden Gate Bridge. But most bridges aren't really that big. There's a lot of bridges right here in Randolph and further out in Morris County that just go over little creeks, little rivers, and we use them all the time. In fact, this is how I noticed, the sign is how I noticed that there was a bridge that I was going over right here on Calais Road. And you can see that sign whether you come from one direction or the other. There's little creeks on both sides. Also, if you are on the highway, if you're on 287 or Route 10 or something, a lot of times one highway goes over another, and that's actually, the top part is a bridge too. So we use bridges all the time, and I thought it would be fun to figure out something about bridges and how they're built, what types there are, and what makes them strong. So stick around and we'll see more about bridges. First, we need to learn some important science information about bridges. All bridges are built to carry some sort of a load, whether it's cars or trains or people. A bridge has to be strong enough to stay up by itself, but it also has to be strong enough to carry the load on it. A load on a bridge creates two different types of forces, compression and tension. Compression is the force that pushes on the bridge and squeezes the bridge parts together. The other force is called tension. This pulls on or stretches the bridge parts. In a well-designed bridge, these two forces, compression and tension, are balanced. Otherwise, the bridge might collapse. Here's another way to think about compression and tension. On this sponge, I've marked lines every half inch on both sides. Okay, you can check on my ruler and see that that's so. Okay. Now, if this were a bridge and there were a weight, a force on the top of the bridge, it would bend a little bit. Okay, not as much as this sponge is bending, but it would bend. And if you look, you'll see that on the bottom of the bridge where it's bent, the lines are actually a little bit further apart than a half inch. These two are about three quarters of an inch apart. That's the side that has tension. It's being stretched. This side where the weight is, is where there's compression. And if you look here, you'll see that some of these lines are even closer than a half inch together. Okay, because the compression is making it come together. And compression and tension are the two different forces that need to balance in a bridge. Before we go any further, let's review the scientific method. The first step in the scientific method is asking a question. Then we come up with a hypothesis, or what we think the answer is going to be. Then we do an experiment. After the experiment, we analyze our results and come up with a conclusion. Was our hypothesis right? If it wasn't, we might do another experiment to try to come up with a better answer. So first, we're going to ask a question. And our question is, which of these three ways of making a bridge is the strongest? The first one is just using a single index card. 
The second one is putting three index cards together. And the third is taking just one index card but folding it. And I'm going to show you how we fold it. First fold the two ends together so that they meet in the middle like that. Then unfold it. And then on each of those small folds, fold it up one more time on each side so that it makes a shape like this. Wait, hang on. Okay, it makes a shape like this. It's just one card, but it makes a shape called a channel shape like that. Okay, so that's our question. Our second part of the scientific method is coming up with our hypothesis. So think about it. Think which of these three things you think is going to be strongest. And next we'll do our experiment. Okay, now we're going to test those three shapes that we talked about. So we have our little town here, and the bears want to make a bridge that crosses the duck pond. So they can stand on the duck pond and look at the ducks. Okay, so first we're just going to use our single card. Okay, I'm going to put that here. Now again, if you don't have cards or pencils, you can use whatever kind of things you have at home. All right, let's see. One bear. Oh. Oh, the one bear actually made the bridge crash. So on the single sheet of paper, we got one bear. Now here's three cards. Here's three cards that I haven't glued or stapled or anything together. I'm just putting them together here. And we'll see if this is stronger. Okay, so here's our one bear. There's still a little bit of space, so let me try a second bear. Mm, it looks like it looks like it's touching the water, but a third bear for sure, and it's touching the water. So that did better than the single sheet. Now we'll do the one that we folded. Remember we folded it up on each side like this. You know what this kind of looks like? Something that a candy bar comes in when you get a candy. Okay, let's see how many bears fit here. One, two, three, four, Five. This isn't moving the bridge at all. There's still plenty of room under there. In fact, we get more bears. I'm running out of room on the bridge. But this bridge is definitely strong enough. I can't even count how many bears could fit on here. But it's definitely stronger than any of the others because I have one, two, three, four, five, six seven, eight, nine bears on here, and it still hasn't even moved. Okay. Was your original hypothesis correct? The shape of a bridge does affect its strength. Here the folded card was strongest. Are you ready to do another experiment? What else can make a bridge strong? Let's try this. Which shape is stronger, the triangle or the square? Okay, now we're going to see which shape is stronger, a triangle or a square. We're going to take one of these cards and we're just going to fold, you can measure it if you like, but we're just going to fold it in thirds like this. And then we're going to tape the sides together to make a big, long triangle shape. You'll see what I mean in a second here. Okay, see it's hollow, but it's 
the shape of a triangle. The next one we're going to make into a square. This is a little easier, fold it in half, then in half again on each side. And again, we're going to tape it to make a big hollow square tube. And we're going to see which of these is better when it's under force. Here is my square tube. So here's my square, and here's my triangle. So if I push on this, look, when I push on it, it kind of starts to bend. And it flattens out pretty quickly. But the triangle, I'm pushing on it with just the same amount of force and it smushes down a little bit. It compresses a bit, but it doesn't collapse the way this one does. Hmm. A triangle shape gives its strength to a type of bridge called a truss bridge. Look at the triangles in this bridge. This bridge is called the fourth bridge and it was built in Scotland in 1890, and it's still standing today. The type of bridge we built with our index cards is a simple type of beam bridge. The beam bridge was probably the first kind of bridge ever built. A tree over a river makes a simple beam bridge. This type of bridge is supported on either end by land or by tall columns called piers. Look at this bridge and see how piers along the length of it add strength. A box girder bridge is a type of beam bridge. Do you recognize this New Jersey bridge? It's the Driscoll Bridge crossing the Raritan River on the Garden State Parkway. Let's go down the shore. An arch bridge is another type of bridge that's been around for thousands of years. In an arch bridge, the load is carried along the curve to the end supports called abutments. This bridge is called the Angie Bridge. It's crossed the Shao River in China for over 1400 years. Arch bridges are still being used today. This is the Bayonne Bridge that crosses from Bayonne, New Jersey, over the Kilvan Cull to Staten Island in New York. A suspension bridge is often the best bridge to build over a large body of water. This is the George Washington Bridge that crosses the Hudson River to connect New Jersey and New York. It actually has two different decks. Sometimes when you want boats and ships to go under a bridge, the best type of bridge for the job is a movable bridge. You might choose a bascule bridge or a drawbridge like the Tower Bridge in London. You might choose a swing bridge like the Little Current Swing Bridge in Ontario. Or you might choose a vertical lift bridge. Do you see how the roadway actually lifts up on this bridge? This is the Pont Jacques Chaban de Ma, a bridge in Bordeaux, France. Okay, well that's it for today. Hopefully you learned some things about bridges and had some fun. And if you have other stuff at home, like toys, like these, or Legos, you might try making bridges out of those too and see how long you can make them and how strong you can make them. Okay, well that's it for now. This is Miss Mary Ellen at the Randolph Township Library for STEAM Explorers. See you next time.